Okay, okay. Here we are, you and Cronin Observatory. It's nice to have you all here. As you can tell, there's a big crowd tonight. We're thrilled to have so many folks here to share tonight's special event. Please bear with us. We're doing the best we can. We want you all to have an exciting experience. I just heard a huge roar from the crowd outside, which means that the clouds are getting a little lighter, and we might still be able to see the uh, actual total lunar eclipse when I'm done talking about it. So you will forgive me if I talk really fast and try and get through the slides as quickly as possible. I got a few basic things to say, and then you know, if you have any questions at all, ask anyone with a name tag. We've got uh, folks here to try and help out as much as possible. So my name is Peter Jedicke. I'm a volunteer here, and I'm a member of the Astronomy Society. I got these slides from discovertheuniverse.ca, which is a resource to try and share astronomy with Canadians all across the country, and it's sponsored by a couple of different astronomy organizations. So it's our lunar eclipse. This is a picture of Saturn, just for fun. <laughs> Not to do with the lunar eclipse. Okay. Here are the basic facts for tonight. This is what you really needed to know when you arrived two hours ago. The moon, the moon is moving across the sky in the direction shown by this green arrow. At about 9.07, the first edge of the moon entered the dark part of the Earth's shadow. That was already a while ago, it was kind of cloudy. We had a live feed going, the live feed is still out there on the TV, and so we were able to see that part of it, even though it was cloudy here, you'll see it from some other observatory. It's clear in Nova Scotia, it's clear in Sarnia. Sarnia! It's just not very near yet. So at 10 after 11, sorry, at 10 after 10, the moon entered was completely in the Earth's shadow. And it would stay in the Earth's shadow until about 23 minutes after 11. At that point, the moon will begin to leave the Earth's shadow, and it will be partly in the Earth's shadow until half past midnight. And you know, you're welcome to stick around. We'll be here to answer as many questions as possible, show you whatever we can possibly show you, and help you enjoy this event as much as possible. So that's the basic facts about what's happening tonight. And now I'm going to fill that in with lots of other interesting details and stuff that you might like to know. There are, of course, famously, two main kinds of eclipses. Lunar eclipses, like tonight's, where the Earth's shadow falls across the moon, and the moon looks dark. Here's a photo of a past lunar eclipse, just to get things rolling for us. And the other kind of eclipse is the solar eclipse, where the shadow of the moon falls on the Earth, and leaves a dark patch on the Earth, and if anybody's living in those patches, they get to look up and see the sun blocked out by the moon, so that sky looks dark for a few minutes. Now, the photograph that I chose here is a uh, partial eclipse. The moon's disk partly covers the sun. It's important for me to say that the sun is so bright that even if only a tiny sliver of it is, co is not covered, it'll still make you know, full daylight for you. It's, the sun's just that bright. It's really quite amazing. Here's a slide showing the Earth over here, the sun way, way, way far away, and the moon goes around the Earth in a path called an orbit once a month. Most important fact that folks often overlook is this. In space, exactly one half of the moon is lit by sunlight at any given moment. And exactly one half is not lit by sunlight at any given moment. That's supposed to be obvious, right? Exact, any object would be like that in space, ever, anyway. Question is, which half is lit and which half is not? And what part are we looking at from our vantage point here on the Earth? So that gives us the phases of the moon. At full moon, we are looking at the whole half that's illuminated. At new moon, we are looking at the part that's not illuminated, so in fact we don't see it. New moons are not really visible. The sun's in that direction, they're in the daytime sky, we don't see them. Any other time of the moon's monthly cycle, we see a portion of the illuminated half of the moon. And those are the phases of the moon, that's what we get. Well, that's a great little bit of general information. You might be wondering, if that's the case, why don't we have eclipses every six months, sorry, twice a month, whenever they lined up a little bit? Why not? All the time. Full moon, new moon, they should be lined up. And I'm going to explain to you why. Here's a bigger picture that shows the sun in the middle and the Earth traveling in its orbit around the sun. That takes one year. And the Earth traces out a path called the ecliptic, and the moon's orbit is actually tilted compared to the ecliptic. And because of the tilt, that's what's going to cause us to not have eclipses all the time. 
you'll notice that the shadows are drawn everywhere. Here's another fact that folks often overlook. It's very important. Every object in space always has a shadow behind it all the time. It's not that the shadow suddenly appears when there's an eclipse. There's shadows all the time. So if we have a full moon at this time of year, when the moon is up high and it's tilted above the Earth's orbit, the shadows are not going to go anywhere interesting. Or if it's a new moon, the shadow of the moon won't go anywhere interesting. So there's no eclipses. Only when the lineup is such that the shadow of the one object falls across the other object, that's when it gets interesting. That's when the eclipses occur. So you'll notice that those are six months apart here on this diagram. But in fact, of course, even then, we don't have eclipses every six months. Eclipses are possible at those times. But there's a more complicated pattern. In fact, it turns out that in a 12-month calendar year, there have to be a minimum of two eclipses and a maximum of seven. But there's no rule saying that they all have to be the same kind of eclipse. There's no rule saying they all have to be visible from where you are. So there's an awful lot of extra little complications involved with what's going on. And of course, it just so happens that tonight's topic is the total lunar eclipse. So here we have a diagram, the moon going around in its monthly orbit, and there's the cone of the Earth's shadow, and as the moon goes around, the moon travels across space and enters the Earth's shadow, and there's what happens in the case of the full moon. Now, as the full moon is in the shadow and suddenly gets dark, we don't see it for a little while. We, actually, we are going to see it. We're going to see as I explain this to you. The shadow is a little bit more complicated than I've let you know so far. The dark part of the shadow is called the umbra. The moon, when it's in the umbra, is not getting lit up by the sun at all. <coughs> However, there's also the partial shadow around the edge. If you could put your eyeball out here in the penumbra, you would see a slice of the sun blocked off by the earth. Even a slice of the sun is bright enough to make the whole moon look like a full moon. So we don't get to see the penumbra. There's nothing to, it's not remarkable enough. Nobody really notices it. So that's what makes the sort of, you know, the, the way the arrangement of these things is the way it is. Everybody on the half of the Earth that's facing the shadow of the Earth will see the lunar eclipse at the same time. So from this point out, straight out into space is where the shadow goes. And here we all are. This is for tonight's <laughs> event. Everybody in this half, West Africa, the Americas, we're all seeing the lunar eclipse. Folks in the Pacific or in Australia, it's daytime. It's all happening behind them, so they don't get to see it. Folks who are living in these stripes here, they get to see part of what they've got because the, moon is, the lunar eclipse has already started when the moon rises. Or it hasn't finished yet when the moon sets, one or the other. So they don't get to see the whole thing. So there is a very little amount of cloud left and then it's all clear, so you might want to like speed up. Do you think it's going to get cloudy again in five minutes? Yeah, it's completely clear behind that. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Everybody got a picture, so you guys might want to speed up a bit and then you guys can head on upstairs. I'm all going to go on at the speed of lightning here. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, of course it's up to you. If you want to bail on the last few minutes of my talk, feel free, I won't be offended. But if it's going to stay clear, you'll still get your chance, even if I finish my talk. Okay? So let me keep talking. We're off totality, so it's not going to be gone like now. There's still half an hour of the red room that you'll get to see. Okay. So it's not going to be gone like now. Because it's 10, to, it's 10 to 11 now, and we've got till 20 after 11. And I'll only be a few more minutes. Okay, so here's that diagram again showing the mechanics of what's happening. The moon drifts across the sky through the shadow of the Earth, giving us the lunar eclipse. Here's a photograph that a photographer took focused on the full moon as success. This is a multi exposure. So there's multiple pictures here of the full moon. But as you can see, as it went through the shadow of the Earth, it traces out the shape of the Earth's shadow. Very dramatic way to show that effect. The camera could have been adjusted for lower light, and then you would have seen what's going on inside here. Right now it's dark because the camera has been exposed for the full moon. We'd like to talk about what's going on there as well. If you were an astronaut standing on the moon during the lunar eclipse, you'd look back and see the disk of the Earth covering the sun, but you'd also see a red ring around it. What is that red ring? That ring is our atmosphere. And so the atmosphere is lit up by the sun on the opposite side. In fact, of course, what we're really getting there, this is a really neat thought, all of the sunrises and sunsets all around the Earth at that moment 
are causing the red ring around the Earth, and that illuminates the moon with a red light. So we might be able to see in a couple minutes how the darkened moon still has a red light shining on it that comes from the atmosphere. Another question that folks are often asking about this eclipse in particular is that the moon is not always the same distance from the Earth. When the full moon is, occurs farther away from the Earth, not by much, when the full moon occurs closer to the Earth, the moon looks different sizes. It's not that big of a difference. It's really only about 14% difference from max to minimum. And that's not something you would ordinarily notice. So I'm a little bit disappointed when I see the hype in the media about how close the moon might be. It's not that big of a deal. It's still mainly just interesting because the moon is going through the shadow of the Earth. To review, here are those facts about tonight's lunar eclipse. And the last three or four slides are about solar eclipses, just to fill you in on what's going on. Well, actually, let me skip. I've already said the tips for observing, so you don't need me to repeat these. You already know what we're going to see. And eclipses do occur in geometrical groups, and some folks think that that's interesting unto itself, but there's no special significance to this group of four eclipses that is ending tonight. There's nothing about that that's really special. Lunar eclipse that we'll have next is in 2019, January. January is not a comfortable month around here, so we kind of live with it. In a solar eclipse, we're going to have solar eclipse in 2017. Some folks are already planning for that because a solar eclipse can be more dramatic even. <laughs> Comparing a lunar eclipse to a solar eclipse, look at that. There is a bit of a danger with looking at the bright sun. So if you have an opportunity to see a solar eclipse, make sure you do it in a safe manner. Astronomers are always very careful about that. Here, it, if you think about what I've been saying, here's a quick chart to kind of summarize what I've been talking about. And this map shows those next solar eclipses. In 2017, the solar eclipse goes across the US. If you want to see the total solar eclipse in 2017, you have to follow me down to Kentucky, because that's where I'm going to be. <laughs> Go on with me. Stay here, you'll see a partial. You'll notice there's a blue stripe in 2024. In fact, that eclipse, the total part of the solar eclipse in 2024, is right south of London here. All you have to do is go to St. Thomas and you'll get to see the total solar eclipse in 2024. Of course, it's in April, and you'll notice it's probably going to rain that day. <laughs> That's like, I'm so pleased that Parshani and Els have been waving their hands out there, telling me the sky is clear. It means you're going to get a chance to see this. You choose whether you want to go upstairs or out to the sidewalk. 